earlier last year, 2014, uh, Levin group uh, found that uh, actually in three dimensions, uh, there's another different kind of a statistics, which the statistic between loop and loop. Okay, between loop and loop. But now we need three loops to, to complete this uh, statistic. So it goes like this. So first we have one loop, loop A, and uh, both loop B and loop C are linked with loop A. Okay. Then we consider a process when we take the loop B, we go into loop A and uh, expand and come out, go back to itself, and the, the original condition. And this process is a well-defined uh, braiding process. And it's a braiding process between loop objects only. It does not involve any particles. It's only loop statistics. Okay, it's only loop statistics. But suppose that I consider an ordinary three-dimensional Z2 Tori code model, then now there will there will be no statistics between the loops. Okay. We have no statistics. However, suppose I take a three-dimensional SPD phase and I couple it to gauge field, then the gauge field will introduce the loop statistics, and then those loops will have a braiding statistic angle. Have three loops that to this angle. Okay, we have this kind of physics. And again, this phase angle can be computed by simply counting the instantal number in the space time. Okay, counting the instantal number in the space time. So let me show you how to do that. What, what, what is in the finite Sorry, say again? Yes. It doesn't collapse. So what kind of topological number does it carry? Does it carry under Z2 or under U1? Topological number? Well, I mean, the, uh, the ground state wave function is a fluctuation, superposition of all the configuration of the loops. For example, if you take a, take a three-dimensional Tori code model, right, I mean, the, the loops are gapped, but they are not confined. I'm asking a much simpler question. So for example, think about our Yeah. It has a fixed orientation with a finite tension. But now if you actually close it in a loop, right, then you actually collapse it because it changes the orientation with all the different numbers you contribute. So in this case I'm just wondering what's going on. It it's uh well, I mean if you put it there, it will decay to vacuum eventually, but I can still consider it as excitation. Any excitation will decay. Right. A pivot tension will also decay. Not a stable ground state. It's not. It's not. It's an excitation. It will it will vanish, but I can create it. Right? I can I can make a braiding process before it collapses, before it annihilates. Okay? But any braiding can be considered I can always create a pair of a particle and a particle braid and then annihilate them. But this process already gives you a non field phase angle. So why are they interesting Any particle and a particle will decay, but they are still interesting. Right? Any anion. Any anion, so let me say this. In any topological phase, when you calculate the anion statistics, this is a standard procedure to do. Create an anion, anti anion pair, create another pair, braid them, then annihilate them. As long as the braiding occurs before they annihilate, it is still well defined the braiding process. It still gives a phase angle. Well, the soliton is only stable when it does not get close to anti-soliton. Right, that's right. So you have right. anti-soliton. Yeah, I do have anti-soliton, but I can do things before it annihilates. I can, I can pull them very far away from each other, right? For example, I can pull these two ones very far away. It's like I pull the soliton very far away from anti-soliton, so they do not annihilate so fast. They, they, they have a very, very long lifetime for me to do braiding. Yeah, you can consider that. Yeah, but but in terms of braiding, I don't think that matters so much, though. Right. 
right? I can, I can, I can, I mean, I'm, I'm talking about a topological thing, so it means that it doesn't matter how long the loop is, but the lo when the loop is longer, the decay, decay time will be, will be much longer, right? So like I pull them far away from each other, it will take very long time for them to decay. The instant function, sorry, in the in the wave function, it's a solid on give you minus one, but in the in the action, it's the instant on give you some sign. Oh, I see. So yeah. instant I don't know what I mean. Instant is not a particle, so I don't know how to talk about the you know space time configuration stable or not. I know, but uh, when we say stable, we mean a particle is stable or not. When we say something carry conservative quantity, we say a particle carry conservative quantity, but the instant on. It's a space-time configuration. I don't know what it means by saying, you know, I know, I know how many people, they use a different language a lot, but actually, I, I want to be very clear. Okay, solid tone and instant, they are different objects. Okay, so I, so I don't want to say instant tone is uh, stable or not, because it's not a particle. Right? Solid tone is a particle. Okay, so when I talk about a wave function, it's a solid tone which gives you a sign, but in, but in the action, it's a space-time configuration, it's an instant tone give you a, give you a sign. So uh, this A loop will guarantee that uh, B and C they be more strict. Okay. Guarantee they be more strict. Yeah. If if uh, if uh, you, know, you you can argue. I mean, actually, in their paper, there's a very nice figure to show that uh, suppose you don't have A loop, then this braiding will always be trivial. This braiding always trivial. So the only they're only non-trivial when you have A loop because they cannot shrink anymore. Okay. So that's other key. So the three loop statistics. I mean, the topological number, yeah, topological number is always quantized, right? I sort of get a quantized number. Well, in our calculation, we don't see those non-universal phase factors at, at all, right? Yeah. All, all, the, all the calculation comes from the instant tone, and it's a quantized thing. Yeah, I understand. In your field theory, you, you know how to, like, track off the Okay, stuff yeah, I would say that as long as you do things slow enough, Right, it's a gap system. Yeah. Right, as long as it's slow enough, we, 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 we don't get it. So you need to know the energy very precisely of this guy. Yeah, for example. And how long yeah. it takes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. For example, if you, if you know all those. But is, is there maybe a, a more invariant way of... Okay, another way is that you can do like uh, 10,000 experiments and uh, do the average. <laughs> yeah. Then uh, the non-universal information in principle should cancel out. Much doing party function, right? Basically, uh, this uh, process corresponds to some kind of a party integral process in the space time. But the uh, we are talking. Oh, uh, so we are talking about statistics between excitations. Right? I don't know how to do that without excitations. So. Maybe, maybe, maybe you can create some ST matrix, something like that, in three dimension as well. Yeah, that could be possible. Anyway, so uh, okay, so let's uh, let's try to consider one example which uh, has a non-trivial three-loop statistics. One is that this uh, is uh, it's a three-dimensional SPT with a Z2, Z2, Z2 symmetry, and I apologize for so many Z2 here, but uh, this is one uh, simple example that we can consider. So uh, it's again described by this uh, the same field theory, and uh, three Z2 will transform like this. So I will not read it, but you can just look at it. It just act on those uh, O5 vectors in a certain way. And the three loops, they correspond to this kind of a pi flux of uh, three different Z2 theories. Okay, three different Z2 theories. So now I want to consider a process when I take the A loop as a base loop, and the B and C loops, they both link to A loop, and then uh, they do this kind of uh, you know, three loop grading, and try to use this action to calculate what kind of bearing phase I would accumulate during this process. It's not a very easy task, but, uh, but uh, so just, just let me try to explain. Okay? So first of all, first of all, 
Let me reduce the entire process to the B loop. Okay, let me just look at the B loop. Let me stay, let me move along with the B loop. Let me stand with all the B loop and move along with the B loop. Okay? So B loop, because it changes the sign of N2, N3, so, okay. so on the B loop, there will be a half vortex of N2 and N3 attached on the B loop. Okay, is that clear? Okay. So this means that along the B loop, the N2, N3 will have to be zero. What's non-zero, what's allowed to fluctuate, is N1, N4, and N5. Okay, that's what happens on the B loop. So this means that if I reduce my theory on the B-Y sum loop, I should get an effective theory for N1, N4, and N5. Okay, and this is a theory I get. If I move along with the B loop, the effective theory I have is a one plus one dimensional O3 now sigma model with a N1, N4, N5 with a theta term, and the theta term is pi. Okay, the theta term is precise is pi. The reason I get pi is because this is two pi, but I have a half vortex of N2, N3. Now the half vortex will reduce the two pi to pi. It's a one, that one plus one dimensional space time. Okay, so now we only need to calculate the N1, N4, N5 configuration during this braiding process. What kind of configuration it has during the braiding process. So I have uh, made a plot here. Okay, this is the space direction along the B Y sound loop, and this is the time direction. Okay, so I start from this configuration, and after I do this braiding, I go back to the original configuration. And in this uh, one plus one dimensional space time, along with the B Y sum loop, the N1, N4, N5 will be precisely a half instanton, a half O3 instanton. Okay, the reason it half is because actually, uh, uh, for example, if I take the green line here, uh, yeah, the N1 will have to be a, we have a domain wall because the encircle run A, and also because I do that, it's gonna it's gonna have a vortex, a uh, half vortex of the N4 and N5. So this configuration is precisely a uh, half instanton in the one plus one dimensional space with O3 vector. Okay, because I have a theta to the pi here. And because I have a half instant on them, this whole Berry phase will be pi over two. Okay, it's a pi over two. This means that if I take my three loops and do this braiding, I would accumulate the phase factor pi over two. Okay, that's how we can calculate this uh, three loop Berry phase in this way. It also boils down to calculate some instant on numbers, some fractionalized instant on number in the space time. And the reason it can be fractionalized is because I attached it to, uh, to some Z2 gauge field. So basically, we can also use the same way to calculate all the other theta, so theta ACB, BCA, you know, whatever that you want to choose. We just take the same kind of configuration. It's the same kind of strategy. We reduce everything to one loop and calculate the instant number in this, uh, in this space time. Okay. So I'm pretty much done here. So uh, yeah. So this is what I talk about today. So uh, tomorrow, I will go beyond the group call module, try to have a field theory description of all the boson state beyond the group call model that Xiaogang talked about today. And this state will involve gravitational anomaly, and I will also talk about interacting forming SPD states, and we'll try to uh, say something about uh, some speculative relation to a uh, uh, grand unified theory. Okay, so. Any further questions? Actually, uh, if you do have some questions, uh, you can ask Professor Xu uh, in the break. Uh, we'll have uh, 15 minutes break, and so please uh, come back at 3.